Next up, I want to talk about the curl command. So this is the client URL. This is something that's installed um, on Mac to begin with. It's a great tool for testing whether or not you've got your web servers up and running or any web server is currently up and running. So you can make a request the same way as if you went to your browser and typed something into the location bar. You're making a request for a URL. This is a command line way of doing that. So I'll provide the link to this manual page for curl in the description down below so you've got that as a reference. And what I'm going to do here is I've got my basic node web server from a previous video. I put the, I'll put the link to the video down below. Uh, I'm just going to make this run. So I've got this page. I get it up and running. So now on port 1234, this is running. And what it's going to do is it's going to return a few headers and it's going to return a JSON object. So basically it's just a JSON file. Now here on the uh, command line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start using the curl command. And the very basic curl command is just this you put in whatever it is that you want to request. This is the URL that I'm requesting. So this will be an HTTP GET request for this URL. I hit enter and there it is. This is what I get back. I get back that JSON object. Simple enough. So that's a post, uh, sorry, a GET. If I want to do a post, I would add the dash dash data or just dash D and we can pass in post data, so name and value, and then follow it by the URL that we're requesting. And there we go, it comes back. So we did a post, we did a get. Now if you want to see what it is that you are requesting, there is a verbose flag that you can add before you put in the URL. The URL should be the last thing that you're entering here. There we go. So here are all the things that curl is doing behind the scenes and everything that's happening behind the scenes when I made this curl request. So it rebuilt the URL. Well, if you can see here, I didn't put the trailing slash, so that was added for me automatically. It tried because localhost, this is the uh, IPv6 version, so it's trying this address to port 1234. It was a get request. I, over HTTP 1.1. Uh, this is the host. User agent was curl. Um, and then here's the response. So I got an, a 200 response, an HTTP 200 status. There's the content type, access control allow origin, and these three are all the headers right here that I'm setting. Uh, the date, connection, transfer encoding, all that stuff, and then here's the actual response that came back. So that's with verbose. And as I was saying, there is a short form for that, just dash V for verbose. And then dash D is the short form for data. I can send in an empty string if I want to just do a post instead of a get. That's a quick way to do it if you don't have any data. Or if I put in the data like this, and then we'll make our request for localhost again. One, two, three, four. And there we go. So post. That was the request because we did pass in some data. This makes it a post instead of a get. Uh, content length, 10. That's this stuff right here that we sent in. And this is the content type for the request. And then in the response, here it is. Now, in terms of how long it takes to do things, we can also use the command. There's a trace ASCII, which will actually create a txt file for us. It'll give us a trace of everything that's happening and then save it into that file. So I'll do this. This is going to be the get request again. Localhost 1234. There we are. I got the response back. And if I write out now, this was saved to this current directory that I'm in. Here it is. This is the contents right here of that file. So it shows me everything that happened inside of there, all the sent and received data. That's what the ASCII dump does. Now, if you want to find out time, so I'm going to do curl dash dash trace dash time. This is going to tell me how long it took, how many milliseconds it took for each one of these requests or nanoseconds. Make our same request, localhost, port 1234. 
three. I also need to have the verbose in there with that. So dash V and then my trace time. There we go. So this is showing me the time for each one of these requests right here. So how many milliseconds and nanoseconds it took for each one of these things. Okay, so that's post get. Um, we can also do redirects. So if you have a URL that you want to use and you want to have a short form that you use for that instead. So let's say um, resolve is the command and I want to do steve.org. That's going to be the domain name that I'm going to pretend to use in my request. So I'm going to say that and this is going to be the port number that it's using and that's going to redirect to 127.0.0.1. So any request coming in for this is going to redirect it to this IP address over the same port. So that's my resolve and then I put in my actual request what I want to do. So let's say it's going to be a post request for HTTP colon slash slash steve dot org port 1234. There we go. And here's my response. So I made a request for steve.org and it redirected it to localhost for me. So that's what we have here. Okay. Um, the data that's being sent, one other note about that, when you've got this dash D, there is a slight variation on that one as well. You can say dash dash data dash URL encode. So if you have a bunch of information, like say there's spaces inside of here, when you do the request, now let's do a, a, a verbose one and HTTP localhost. It's going to do URL encoding of the data. So it's going to take this data, URL encode it before it gets sent. There we go. Okay, two things left to do here. Let's clear this off. First is cookies. If you do need to send a request with cookies, simple enough. Just say cookie, and then the same way you do post name and value. You don't need the V, I'm just doing that to show you that the cookie is being actually set and sent. There we go, and here it is in the request headers right here. There's the cookie. So you can do that, or the other thing I wanted to show you is usernames and passwords. If you do need to do some basic authentication, if the request that you're making to some server somewhere requires a username and password, you can put that in here. Two different ways you can do it. One is so your username, the password, at, and then localhost, colon 1234. So we can do that, like this. There's the response back. The second way we can do it, curl dash u, and then you can put user name and the password like this, followed by, at the very end, you can add in like this. Okay, and there we have it. So that's the curl command. So you can send post, you can send it by get, you can trace what's happening, you get the verbose, you get the complete feedback if you need, or you just get the response on the, uh, the command line for every curl command. You can resolve, meaning redirect from one URL to another. Uh, we can set up username and password, we can set up cookies. Uh, if you want to do a get request with query string, that's simple enough. You just add that onto the end of the domain that you're calling. So like this, and then at the very end, whatever your query string is going to be, just like that. There it is. And if you only need the headers, I guess that's one more thing to show you. If you only need the headers, you can pass in the head option. Just like that. And then I only get the headers, and you can see here that there is no response. I'm not getting that JSON object back. It's just the headers. So it's a quick and easy way to test something, that if it's live and you're getting the correct headers.
All right, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. As I mentioned before, I'm going to leave a link to my video where I've got the basic server down in the description. I'll have a link to the manual page for curl down in there as well. And as always, thanks for watching.